What's up, Central Illinois? Derek Hayden here. Garrett and I love sharing all the awesome stories about our Central Illinois business leaders. We want to make sure our Central Illinois businesses are protected so we can continue to share all these great stories. That's why you should consider another great Central Illinois company, Pekin Insurance, for your business insurance needs. That's right. You can get all the commercial insurance coverages that your company needs from an excellent insurance company headquartered right here in Pekin, Illinois. Pekin Insurance offers comprehensive business coverage that lets you focus on what's important to you, employees, profits, and peace of mind. Ask your local Pekin Insurance agent about their commercial insurance products or learn more at PekinInsurance.com. You can also contact your favorite podcast host, Garrett, or myself, Derek, and we'll go beyond the expected for you. Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. What's up, Central Illinois? I'm Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Omer. We are your hosts for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, powered by Zambu. Zambu is a delicious grapefruit or wildberry vodka-based spirit infused with a Brazilian buzz button. It's smooth, tasty, and leaves you with a signature tingle. Learn more at ZambuLiquors.com. Zambu, taste the tingle. All right, Central Illinois. Today's guest is the CEO and managing partner of Sarah Ventures. He is also the author of Thank God It's Monday and Risking It. Ladies and gents of Central Illinois, please welcome Tim Hare. How are you doing, Tim? Hey, I'm doing well today. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. We're pretty excited to hear your story. And um, Garrett and I have done a little bit of research on your business and your background, and we're looking forward to digging into that. But before we do, Tim, I'm going to kick it to Garrett, and he's going to take you through our speed round to get to know you a little bit better. All right. Sounds yeah, good. Like, like Derek said, we're going to ask you a few questions. We've got six questions. Um, if you can answer them under 60 seconds, then you win the million dollar prize. So I hope you're ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> First concert that you've ever attended. Uh, heart. Heart. All right. <laughs> Favorite movie. I love fugitive. Okay. Favorite ice cream flavor. Mm, boy, that one's really hard. I'm going to have to go with uh, rum raisin. Rum ra- That's That's a first. I don't know that we've had that answer. Are you an iPhone or Android guy? I'm an iPhone guy. Favorite social media platform? We'll do Facebook. <laughs> I, I seemed a little reluctant with that answer. A old, old, little old school here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> And last but not least, why Central Illinois? Mm, born and raised, lots of uh, family and friends. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the most important thing in life at the end of the day, I think. Absolutely. I agree. Well, great. I think you might have just went uh, 61 seconds. So I don't know if you qualified for the yeah, prize or lost not. The, lost the million bucks. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, appreciate that, Tim. Um before we jump into asking you a bunch of questions, um, if you could, for our listeners, uh, give us a background, personal background, where you came from, h- how you got to where you are now, and what you're doing now. Sure. I uh, grew up in Peoria, Illinois, in a uh, family business, <clears throat> hair nursery. So I got put to work, I say, uh, roughly in the fifth grade uh, and never looked back. <laughs> so I got uh, schooled on all aspects of uh, landscaping, garden center, sod farm and all that. Uh, ended up getting a degree in accounting from Illinois State University in Normal. And then my first job was here in Champaign with uh, a firm that is now known as RSM, uh, was formerly known as McGladdery and a couple of other names, one of the largest uh, international accounting firms. So uh, moved to Champaign in 1983 uh, and had about a 15, roughly 15 year career with McGladdery. Most of that was here in Champaign and then uh, spent a few years actually in San Diego And I was on the consulting side of the business. So accounting firms typically have three different components. They typically have an audit function. 
a tax department and then management consulting. So I was on the consulting side, so not doing as many debits and credits, although most of my family uh, sort of uh, thought I knew how to do tax returns. <laughs> so that, la that lasted a while. Uh, so I uh, moved to uh, uh, San Diego in the mid-90s, again, with McLattery, spent three years building a consulting practice for the San Diego office, which had not previously had one. And then uh, had an opportunity, you mentioned the book, I had an opportunity to, to write a book uh, called Thank God It's Monday. The premise there, as you might surmise, is align your personal passions and interests uh, with your work, because that's where you spend a lot of your time. I uh, wrote the book while I was still at McLadry, but as uh, fate would have it, uh, ended up departing the firm to uh, found uh, a consulting entity called Life Vision. Again, premise there of uh, aligning life with work. So the focus was on leadership development, strategic planning, professional speaking. Uh, that, that was actually a really, really challenging couple of years. I call it my uh, ultimate face plant. Uh, so uh, although the, you know, the work was compelling, it was really difficult to make a living off of it, particularly when, when your family had become accustomed to the lifestyle of a partner in an accounting firm. When, you know, when, when I went out on my own, I was unable to maintain that same standard. So, uh, uh that, that's what, that was, you know, sort of uh, uh, part and parcel uh, of, of the reason of moving back to Illinois, back to Champaign in 1999. Ended up taking uh, a position with a software company called Source Gear that was based here. And they were uh, doing some work with the Mosaic browser. Uh, Eric Sink, who founded Source Gear, was part of Spyglass. Spyglass was one of the major licensees of the Mosaic browser. Uh, and they actually wrote Microsoft Internet Explorer. Wow. Uh, licensed it to Microsoft. Uh, so Eric was taking the Mosaic browser down to uh, personal digital assistance. This was in the pre-smartphone era mm -hmm. and cell phones. So I uh, did that for a couple of years and then had the opportunity to uh, co-found a company called iSight, little letter I, C-Y-T. We were building high-speed cytometers, which are uh, cell analyzers, cell sorters, and uh, that company was located here in the research park at the University of Illinois. So this would have been sort of circa 2001, 2002. And uh, we ended up having some really great success with that company. We had some major contracts with, with large entities like Monsanto, uh, ultimately ended up selling instrument systems to a lot of uh, research hospitals like St. Jude's, uh, research universities like Illinois, Princeton, Johns Hopkins, and we were acquired by Sony in 2009. So uh, cool. uh, that that was really the genesis of the current role here at Sarah. Year. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so uh, Sarah Ventures really started initially as a consultancy, working with a lot of tech companies coming out of the University of Illinois, helping them with raising capital, with strategy, with what we call lean startup methodology. How do you bring a product, you know, product to the market? And very quickly, uh, we realized I, I was joined uh, about uh, six months after forming that by uh, Dennis Beard. Dennis had been a venture capitalist that had funded my company, iSight. So the two of us uh, and my daughter, Alyssa, actually, we the three of us were Sarah Ventures. Uh, we realized that uh, most of our clients needed capital. So we formed a small fund, Sarah Capital One, to provide venture capital to our consulting clients and over time, that's become now a series of venture capital funds. We manage about 155, 160 million in early stage capital. And today, Sarah Ventures looks you know, mostly like a venture capital firm. We still do a little bit of consulting. Obviously, most of that is you know, for portfolio companies, but that's sort of the thumbnail sketch of the, uh, of the journey. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Tim, you are That's smarter awesome. than I am. I can tell you yeah. that so. <laughs> by far. <laughs> so you mentioned that you, Sarah Ventures works primarily with tech companies. Is that correct? Right. So uh, we, we're typically coming alongside of an early stage tech company uh, in what is called the seed stage. Uh, so companies kind of progress through 
uh, sort of what we call precede, seed, A, B, and th those are just euphemisms that are given to the names of funding rounds. If, if you want to translate it into sort of you know years old. Most, you know, pre-seed companies are, you know, they're, they're typically zero to one or two years old. A seed stage company is kind of, you know, two, three, four years old, and then they kind of progress uh, beyond that. So we're getting, we're getting in early. Uh, often the companies uh, are, uh, you know, the teams are relatively small and uh, yeah, they, they have a particular piece of technology. It's often protected by intellectual property of some kind by a, you know, suite of patents or or trade secrets. And, and it's usually a solution to a problem in the marketplace that we would consider disruptive, right? So they're, they're bringing a solution that's kind of novel and it has the potential to disrupt the current market and, and gain considerable market share over time if they execute properly. So uh, awesome. that's the type of companies that we're you know, typically working with. Great. And now will, will you reach out to those companies or do they typically reach out to you first? It's a little bit of both. Uh, on a given week, we probably receive 15 to 20 inbound inquiries, right? So these are companies that are seeking capital or seeking assistance. So probably 15 to 20 of those are coming inbound a week. So over the course of the year, you might see as many as a thousand different opportunities coming our way. And, and we do some reach uh, out as well. So we'll attend trade shows and conferences. We have relationships with a lot of accelerators and incubators, which are those, those are just uh, programs that early stage tech companies are participating in to improve their game. So uh, for instance, uh, there's a group out of Madison, Wisconsin called Generator. They run a series of accelerator programs and we'll attend their demo day to get to know the cohort of companies that they have coming through their program. So we're, we're doing some reaching out. Companies are reaching in, you know, and over the course of time, you know, we'll, we'll probably end up on a given year, we'll work with about 10 to 12 new companies. So, okay. you know, look at, looking back over time, we've invested in just over a hundred Oh, wow. different companies. And of course, we, you know, we, we've done consulting for a, you know, a broader group than just that hundred, but the, the preponderance of, you know, what we're doing is with those companies that we're actually putting an investment into. Excellent. What you mentioned, at least at the beginning phases, you were working primarily with um, individuals starting out of the U of I um, uh, program. So I also see that you were, uh, you're active in the, uh, what they call it, entrepreneur in residence program at U of I. So tell us a little bit about your relationship there. Yeah. So the, the EIR is uh, a program where there, there are about eight to 10 of us uh, that, that have, you know, a variety of entrepreneurial backgrounds. The university contracts with us on a paid basis, it's it's relatively minor pay, actually. <laughs> and they make us available to students, whether they are undergraduate, graduate, you know, postdocs. Uh, we're also made available to staff at the university and to uh, faculty. So basically anybody that has some type of an affiliation with the university can contact an EIR with whatever they want to talk about. And it's obviously sure. typically about starting a company or bringing a piece of technology to the market. So through the EIR, they can come sit for a consultation at no charge to them. Awesome. And it's the university's way of, you know, supporting ultimately economic development uh, of, of the various technologies that are being, you know, put forth at, at the big U. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Well, one thing that intrigues me, and I think a lot of people listening are business owners, entrepreneurs. One thing that you are very, um, you know, loud about on the internet, I'll say loud, but you talk about a lot is taking risk. Um, so I'd like for you to talk a little bit about your, uh, obviously you wrote a book about taking risk. Um, right. You talk about risk is good. And I know a lot of people <laughs> are a little shy about that. So tell us a little bit about your mindset about taking risk. Yeah, and it, it's been a bit of an evolution for me, and a lot of it really stems from just my personal life experience, right? So I, I wasn't raised necessarily to be a big risk taker, uh, although 
you know, sort of by definition, my father was an entrepreneur running, you know, an entrepreneurial organization, although he was, you know, super encouraging to, you know, go get a career in something like accounting, which mm-hmm. isn't terribly entrepreneurial. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that sort of that series of steps of leaving Illinois to, to go, you know, move to San Diego in the mid 90s when I didn't know anybody. And then that step to leave the firm and start Life Vision. Um, you know, the, and, and there's a couple of other stories that I tell in the book, risking it. Uh, so that that was my life experience. And, you know, I've come to sort of, as I've reflected on that, you know, the taking of those risks, risks have been sort of the, the, the catalysts for a lot of personal growth and a, a lot of, uh, you know, but both, both, you know, challenging things and, and good things. And, and of course, like I said, you know, you know, the starting of Life Vision was ultimately in, in my book, kind of a face plant for two years, right? So <laughs> risking, you know, you're, you're not always guaranteed to quote unquote succeed in the moment, but you're, you're going to learn a heck of a lot. You're going to be stretched. You're going to grow. And uh, I think that's a big part of life is, you know, how do we get outside our comfort zone and grow and enrich our experience and enrich the lives of others? And that's ultimately what I think risking is about, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, uh, although it's, it's not easy. Uh, and the older we get, you know, it seems we're, we're inclined to take less risk because we yeah. perceive the stakes to be higher sure. of, you know, ma- making a move, whether it's, you know, geographic or career or, or what have you. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned you've got some of those stories in your book. Tell us a little bit more about, about the actual book, the risking it, book, yes. and then we'll get into the other one. Sure, sure. So uh, I wrote Risking It uh, about uh, six or seven years ago, and and uh, it's it's really a, a memoir of of stories uh, from from my life, actually dating all the way back, you know, to childhood. But mo- most of them have to do with my career experience and uh, how one ultimately takes risks. Uh, the book is also about faith and you know, what, what role does faith play in one's life? Uh, how, 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 do, how do you, again, ultimately kind of integrate all aspects of your life, right? Whether that's, you know, personal, professional, faith, uh, family. And uh, so I, I try to share a perspective of how, how that worked for me. And, you know, hopefully there are a few nuggets uh, in there. So I wrote, wrote the book, uh, while being here at Sarah Ventures and wrote it with the assistance of my my oldest daughter, Alyssa Cole, who I mentioned joined Sarah Ventures all the way back, I think, in 09 and uh, is still with us here today on a on a halftime basis. Cool. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, that that's interesting. Garrett and I have always been interested in just people who have the, you know, tact to write their own book. That's yeah. that's interesting <laughs> to us. And we've met so many people from central Illinois who have some type of a passion that they want to share, who have, you know, been able to write their own book. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, for, for you listeners out there, if you are interested in self-publishing a book, we did a biz tip series with Francie Heinrichsen up in Peoria, um, who basically took us through a three-part series of how to self-publish your own book. Yeah. Um, so that was very cool. So um, I want to hop back into the um, Sarah Ventures thing real quick just because i i'm interested in learning how you you're in four different cities it looks like so obviously champaign chicago san diego park city so i guess one question i have is why did you choose those locations yeah uh whether they whether we chose them or they chose us right (laughs) i'm not so sure uh so we you know we originated in champaign that was obvious this is where we lived it's it's where i had done the the source gear and the eyesight startup uh it was where dennis was based so that was kind of the obvious one and you know obviously university sitting in our backyard uh san diego was the second location so i had developed relationships living there for four years with mcgladry And it seemed to be a hotbed of technology, and it is still today. So that was the second location. Then we ultimately brought on a partner based there, Steve Beck. Um, Chicago was the the third location. And uh, we were looking to add uh, what's called a venture partner. So there are managing partners in the firm. This is our full-time job. And Dennis 
Beard, myself, Rob Schultz, and Steve Beck. We are full-time managing partners, but venture partners are folks that have a day job and uh, they agree to spend a certain amount of time with share ventures, and that's typically about a quarter of their time. And uh, we we were looking to have a little more exposure in the Chicago market, and we were we were looking and, and found Karen O'Connor. Uh, Karen was one of the founders of a group called Hyde Park Angels, a really active angel investor group. That's a just a group of individuals that uh, come alongside early stage companies and and uh, invest. So Karen was one of the founders there. She's on the faculty of the uh, Kellogg School at Northwestern. Oh, wow. And she was looking to align with a venture firm and kind of take her career in that direction. So about five or six years ago, Karen came on board uh, as a venture partner. And then ultimately, we, we have another uh, individual that uh, Drew Beard, who, who is in our Chicago office as well. So Drew and Karen are kind of our representatives there. Uh, Park City was sort of an outgrowth of COVID. So Rob Schultz, who had spent most of his uh, last 20 years here in Champaign, uh, decided to relocate to the Park City area uh, in the midst of uh, the COVID go virtual type of a thing. Yep. And uh, so Rob actually splits time. He was he was back for okay. football season. His son is on the on the UI team. Oh, cool. OK, wow. And uh, and so Rob is uh, kind of heading up our, our office there. Well, most venture, though, is a little I, I would call it it's not totally geographic uh, agnostic. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, there is a reason we are in the different cities. But we do look beyond those specific geographic territories. We'll, we'll do a deal pretty much anywhere that it makes sense to do mm -hmm. a deal. Yeah. Uh, but it is nice to have a specific presence in a market where you are tapped into a network of people that are providing you deal flow and uh, mm -hmm. you know suggestions on, on what you might consider in terms yeah. of investment. Very good. So early on, you said you said you went to to Illinois State and got an accounting degree, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. At what point did you think that technology that you would just venture away from this all the way into technology? Had technology just always been something that had you know a high peak interest of yours? Uh, yeah, I, I I enjoyed it, uh, Garrett. I I think it was more. Uh, I, you know, I'm I'm sitting there inside McGladdery and and you're seeing all kinds of entrepreneurial enterprises, right? From, sure. you know, manufacturers to construction to, uh, you know, distribution type businesses, all types of businesses. Obviously we did have tech clients. And when I moved to San Diego, I got exposed to uh, sort of a deeper group of more tech oriented businesses because our office there uh, served more of the tech market. Uh, but it was a bit of a delayed step, right? I really thought, you know, what I was ultimately going to do with my career was this idea of professional speaking and facilitation uh -huh. and so forth. And hence, you know, the thank God it's Monday book and was going to kind of build a practice around that. And when that didn't work out, it was like, OK, you know, what's <laughs> sort of a what do I do? Right. What's a practical <laughs> step? And the tech opportunity with Source Gear was there. And uh, that was intriguing to me because of yeah, the client base that I'd been serving through McGladry, and I thought I could be effective there. I didn't know I'd actually build a career inside tech. It was, it was a bit of a of an accident in that regard. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I hate to keep jumping around, Tim, but the one thing that I noticed hey, on your no on your LinkedIn profile was you have uh, some experience with the a Jimmy John's franchise. So tell us a little yes. bit about that experience because <laughs> I'm a big fan yeah. of Jimmy John's and I could okay. probably have funded the store with my consumption yeah. of their pickles. So yeah, you, 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 me, and uh, my daughter Audra could uh, <laughs> could claim the same. So um, yeah, Jimmy John's ended up being one of the side endeavors along with Game Day Spirit, uh, which is another story for another day, probably. Okay. But, uh, so I was at a track meet. My uh, middle daughter Audra uh, was a pole vaulter for Baylor. And oh, cool. uh, wow. we were on a spring break somewhere in the mid 2000s. I don't remember the exact date. It was probably 08 or 09 and uh, happened to be in Waco and Audra, who's sort of our Jimmy John's freak, uh, was like, you know, why isn't there a Jimmy John's in Waco? Uh, and she said, you know, I 
who go around to these track meets at Texas A&M or UT in Austin and there's Jimmy John. So I literally got on the website and clicked on a map and it looked like the Waco, you know, county was available. So I called up uh, Bob Morena at Jimmy John's and said, you know, is the territory available? And it was. And uh, so that was the extent of the market research that went into uh, <laughs> ultimately owning seven Jimmy Johns wow. in uh, Wake, Waco, great. Belton, and Colleen. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that was quite a journey. Uh, Sounds for, like uh, it. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy John, that's another Central Illinois story. We should try to get that guy on the podcast, Garrett. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, Tim, we are approaching the 30 minute mark. Um, before we jump off of here, since we have mainly business owners, entrepreneurs from Central Illinois listening, um, any advice or comments that you want to make to anybody listening to the show? Well, yeah, my advice is to it kind of gets back to really tapping into and 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 doing some development work on yourself. And really understanding, you know, what are you good at? What has the collection of your life experiences amounted to? What are you passionate about? So to take, you know, take inventory of all of those things. And to the extent you can, and I, I know not everybody can do this, but align what you're going to do from a business perspective with all of that, right? So be intentional about bringing your purpose to your work. And you're going to do a heck of a lot better and have a heck of a lot more fun uh, doing it. So that would be my, my one nugget. And in the process, that's probably going to involve a risk, right? It's yeah. probably going to involve saying no to whatever you might be doing and stepping out of that and trying something different. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent Great advice. advice. Yes. Well, for all you listeners, um, we've done this before, but if you message Garrett and I, the first person, the first individual to message either Garrett or myself on LinkedIn. You can find us personally there. We will send you a copy of both of Tim's books. So yeah. risking it and um, thank God it's Monday. We'll send you a copy of both books um, on, I guess, uh, from the Central Online Business Leaders podcast. So send us a personal message. We'll send you a copy of both books of uh, Tim has authored and you can learn a little bit more about Tim and his mindset on taking risk. So, um, Tim, thanks for joining the show. Absolutely. Thank you. you yeah. For all you Enjoyed listeners, it. make sure you are subscribing to the CIBL podcast on whatever your favorite podcast platform is. While you're there, please leave us a review. It'd be greatly appreciated. You can also find us on social media, mainly on LinkedIn and Facebook. You can connect with Garrett and I personally there as well. Until next time, Tim, you've officially been civilized. Thanks All for coming right. on the show. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CIBL podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.